Look here, you thirsty, thirsty little thirsty McMuffins. You're not getting enough hydration, and I'm speaking from personal experience, okay? I am not drinking enough water. I need some vitamins and some minerals, and that's why I F with Liquid IV, okay? Use it first in the morning before workout, when you feel run down in the afternoon, after a night out with friends, or on long flights. With just one stick, you can hydrate real life two times faster than water alone, plus get essential vitamins and three times the electrolytes as leading sports drinks, all right? Liquid IV comes in 12 delicious, refreshing flavors to keep your hydration routine exciting. You know what I love? I love when I'm just, I'm out of time, and I haven't been drinking water, and I know I can get a little Liquid IV. I like the energy one to give me a little boost. I also like that piña colada flavor, delicioso. All right, now check this out. I got I got a special for y'all. Real people, real flavor, real hydrating. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code DUDES at checkout. One more time, that's 20% off anything when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code DUDES at liquidiv.com. Dudes Behind the Foods listeners, let me tell you something. Have you heard of ZocDoc? Because that's what we're sponsored by. I love ZocDoc. Let me tell you something. When somebody is just exceptionally good at what they do, it could be a waiter, a chef, or a doctor, you know you're in good hands. But we're talking about doctors here, my friends. And guess what? With ZocDoc, you can feel the quality. And when you know, and when you find the right doctor, you can feel it. And you feel heard and at ease. On ZocDoc, finding the doctor that's right for you is seamless. The quality care you need is just a few taps away on the ZocDoc app. Surprise twist might work for podcasts, but maybe not for medical care. With ZocDoc, there are no alarms and no surprises. Choose from thousands of patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. Browse doctor profiles, upload, and verify your insurance information, and get the care you need. Go to ZocDoc.com foods and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash foods zocdoc dot com slash foods Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp, okay? Now, look, we all need to talk about mental health because it's important, man. I feel like we're not talking about enough, and I'm so glad that we started, and that's why we F with BetterHelp, okay? Look, it's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. Lord knows I get so busy taking care of other people like David so that I forget to look after Tim, you know what I'm saying? So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try, okay? It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge, all right? Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash foods today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash foods. Guess what, guys? We're in the same outfits as the last episode. Because well, I forgot to bring a change of clothes. And because life is crazy, man. Sometimes you just got to do what you do and make light of what you have. And oh my God, have you been watching, dog, the new Naked and Afraid season? I have not. I just started watching the show that you told me about on Amazon. And Ooh, I'm dying. Jury duty. Jury duty is so subtly funny. Yeah. It's just like... I have to do a double take because of how <laughs> stupid the things that are being said. I don't know why the second episode had me dying just from the one Korean guy. He just is like, like, you know, it's about jury duty, which if you guys have done jury duty before, this is actually kind of very real. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, if y'all don't know, so my, my boy PD Flow was like, bro, you have to watch this show Jury Duty on Prime right now. He was like adamant about this shit. He was like, watch it, dog. It's so fucking funny. And if y'all don't know, or if you haven't heard of it, um, it's one of these shows. It's been done before uh, from what I've heard, but it, it's great. Okay, so uh, it's this dude that signed up for what he thought was going to be jury duty and what he thought was going to be a documentary style movie on the process of jury duty, right? So he goes and he goes to jury duty, but everybody that's there, literally every single person is an actor, an improv actor, and he has no idea. So they're putting him in all these very... Um, precarious situations and they're getting his reactions and how he kind of like deals with it and it's so funny Dude, so good 
There's just one. It's, I'll tell you how fucking subtly stupid and funny it is. I right? have one too. Go. It's just this. There's the Korean guy up there. And he's like, he can't be there because he's a business. He's an owner operator of two businesses, but it's two gumball machines. <laughs> just, yeah. And he says it real nonchalant. He's like, he's like, yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm a manager of two gumball machines. So <laughs> he's an owner operator of two gumball machines. And then you see him go aside and he's talking. I'm like, <laughs> Dog, this is the dumbest show ever. So here's here's the clip that PD Flo told me about that sold me. Well, I was like, I didn't even have to like. I was like, I need nothing else because that shit made me laugh. He's like, so there's a part where they're without spoiling anything too much for y'all. There's a part where they're trying to figure out if the name Cody is a girl name or a guy name. And this girl, she's talking, and she's like, Yeah, you know, it could. I mean, Cody could be like, Cody could be a guy, you know, like. Basketball b- basketball player Cody Bryant, and then she goes, swing, <laughs> no. as it's, opposed to swish. And I gotta tell you, like the reason why this is also really funny, mockumentary style things are only funny to the caliber of the actors and actresses that are there. Right, right, right. Because it has to be that believable. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. the ridiculousness seems believable. Mm-hmm. So everybody there is on fucking point. And I forget that sometimes I'm watching a comedy until the stupid words come out because everybody's <laughs> acting is so fucking good. How long? How far along are you? Episode four. Okay, okay. Um, what's lit is I saw this interview with uh, Marsden, the actor, <clears throat> the, the real actor, X-Men, Cyclops. Yeah. And he's saying that, you know, the shit that starts happening is so ridiculous that, of course, you know, they were worried that the dude being pranked, fucking Ronald, would get suspicious, right? So what they would have to do, bro— just to drill in that this is really jury duty, is he said they put in a good 80% of real boring <laughs> jury time where they would sit through like hours and hours of court procedures where nothing funny was happening. No like funny shit. They're just like, oh, we're really in court right now to drill at home. Like, oh, you're at, you're in jury duty right now. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's just like the, like the commitment <clears throat> that you had to do. Like the actors, I was so just mind blown when you really start to like, absorb everything that they're doing it's like yo this shit is crazy it's so good like i it like in con- like conceptually speaking right like when you think about an idea it almost seems impossible to do yeah 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 but they did it and yeah. they did it so fucking well i had this uh tv show idea that almost got picked up like, mm. very fucking close it was my character for kim jong illa mm. right and kim <laughs> it was half reality half not mm. right so Every time we shot this, it was going to be half actors and half not. People don't know what's going on because his character is so fucking ridiculous. And the first episode that we were going to shoot, it was an episode where Kim jong Il, uh, his name wasn't going to be Kim jong It was going to be something a little more re- realistic, right? So mm-hmm. it's not to give it off. Mm-hmm. But he's somebody that's from North Korea and he was a high-level military person. So when he comes to America, he doesn't realize that everybody gasses him up over there. So everything he does is amazing because he's a god. Right, right, right. But over here, it's reality. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> he's trying to build a business and he wants he wants to fill in a gap that other people don't have. So he develops a <laughs> a women's self-defense course. Okay, hilarious. Uh-huh. And it was so fucking when I pitched this shit, like the writers who are comics were fucking crying laughing. Yeah. And the executive were mortified. Cause it was about <laughs> he's doing he's a women's self-defense instructor, right? And the first thing, the first episode is that he thought that the women's self-defense class was him teaching sexual offenders how to defend himself against women. <laughs> And so the whole course is how to beat up women. (laughs) (laughs) And so it was all these ridiculous scenarios, all these acronyms that were all fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in this episode is that half of those women are there to learn self-defense and the other half don't or paid actors. Oh, hilarious. So it was just going to be this whole situation. It was this close to getting picked up. And what happened? Uh, It was during the time North Korea tapped into like US's shit. She was in serious. So they didn't want to take it. So ah. it's a little crazy. So it was like a little touchy. So they passed on it. Okay. Well, I'm going to steal it and repitch it. You should. It would be hilarious. <laughs> and then I want to get paid. <laughs> Just take it. I don't care. Well, I don't need the fame. I want the check. I want it all. <laughs> um, so on this new season, dog, of Naked and Afraid, it's great because they brought back a bunch of the OGs again, right? Which they do for the XL Naked and Afraids. But this time, bro, it's the first time where there's a cash prize. A hundred thousand dollars, and it's naked and afraid, last man standing or last one standing. So for the first time ever, there's an elimination process, and they start competing, and it's a shit like this. It's like 
You know how when they first get dropped off, they have a sack with like a couple things, a pot, maybe a fire starter. This time they open their sack, nothing inside. And the only way, they have to follow a map to find certain things that are, like, fucking hidden. There's, like, you know. That's hella hard. Bow and arrows hidden in a tree. They fucking, sometimes they thought they were going to find the shit at the location, but it's not there. They got to dig to get shit. And they, um, and it's the first time where there's actually been, like, mad drama, dog. Because, like, one guy, he wants to, like. He found some knives and he wants to trade, but everyone else is like, no, nah, what's this trading bullshit, bro? Like, let's be a community until we have to actually compete. You know what I'm saying? So they're all pissed at him and they don't want to feed him any food. It's crazy. Dude, you got to watch another show. It's on Netflix. Okay. It's very similar to that, but it's it's about teams and there's like sabotage. Mm. People are, are are like fucking with people to the point where they're making them quit on purpose. Mm. They, it's fucking nuts. There's dra- It was actually a lot of drama because there was two girls that teamed up and the whole world hated them mm. because they were evil. They were evil ass people. So technically what they were doing was wrong, but it, they, it wasn't in the rule book that you couldn't do the things that you were doing. Mm. So they would, <clears throat> there was an episode where, where they walked up and they basically started destroying another contestant's raft and shelter. Damn. Like fucking it up. And they're like, what are you doing? They're like, if you don't want to be a part of this shit, then you, quit. Just drop yeah. out right now. Just quit. Drop out. And so they're fucking his camp up. They're fucking his boat and up. And they're in the wilderness? They're in the wilderness. What the fuck? It was crazy drama. That show is fucking nuts. What's dude. it called? I'll, I'll find it and I'll send it to you. But it was pretty crazy. And they people hate them. Wow. They People, like in real life, they hate them. They're getting like death threats because of how terrible of human beings they are. And they're like, we know it's a game, but you are definitely trash human beings. That's, the, that's kind of the drama on this <clears throat> season of, of uh, Naked and Afraid because this one dude that doesn't want to... Uh, participate in the community aspect of it you know there's one part where he's like everyone's just kind of looking for um for resources in this like river and he sees uh another team's pot that they boil their water in he's like nah i could i could totally eliminate two of my my competitors right now and just kick their pot into the ocean and they would never know right and he's like but i'm not gonna do that and he tells them he's like hey man you know had a moment right now where i thought ah i could i could I could ruin their game and kick their pot into the ocean, you know? And this guy's Steven. He's like, so what, you want me to thank you for not being a, like an asshole? Like, <laughs> you're, say, you're, you're, you're saying that to me like, you want me to say thank you, you know? Yeah. It's like, why would you openly tell me that? Yeah, exactly. You fucking idiot. Now I don't trust you at all. Exactly. That's a dumby. Ooh, dumby. But, say spe- dumby. Dumby. <laughs> but speaking of naked and afraid, dog, okay, so. Um, I, I, I had this idea in my head and I'll say it now because I feel like this podcast is where we kind of workshop ideas too and give them away to people. Uh, but what if we did an episode of when foodie calls slash send foods, right? Mockumentary style where it's us naked in the wilderness and we're like, we're treating it just like an episode of send foods, but we're like, Oh, wow, well, the berries we found on this branch. Oh, let me tell. Oh, like the bitterness really compliments the blah, blah, blah. But we're naked and we're like killing animals and shit. But we, it's like an episode of Sin Foods. We're never going to do this. No, 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 never. <laughs> we're never going to do it. That requires so much work. <laughs> or maybe we will. Well, well, who fucking knows? We'll see. After I write the movie. You know what's trippy though? What? You know, because there's like this whole writer strike going on, mm-hmm. right? I, I didn't really think about this until I was... Uh, I had my YouTube thing going on and then uh, Dumb's podcast came out and then he was interviewing one the, the writer, uh, one of the creators of the writers of Beef. Yeah. And then he was um, giving Dumb credit for this joke that they put in the in in the in Beef mm. with how much they could recognize an Asian by the back of their head. Mm. Right. And there was like a funny conversation that Dumb had with um, with uh, Rick on there. Mm-hmm. And I, I was like, oh, that's kind of dope. He was like, Dumb's yeah. Rick, not my Rick. Yeah, yeah. That's dope. But then in my mind, the second thought of that, I was like, Wait, so you stole his joke? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And yeah. you openly stole his shit? And mm-hmm. then you're saying it right now like you're, he's supposed to compliment you? Yeah. But then, you know, Dumb was like, oh, that's dope. I'm like, Dumb, that's actually not dope. Oh, Dumb didn't even know? Well, he told him on the podcast. And then Dumb was like, oh, yeah, I saw that you 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 know got that inspiration. I'm oh. Like, that's not inspiration. He actually stole your joke. But <sighs> I don't know, like, how people feel about that. How interesting. Right? I mean, I saw it a little differently. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that was suck that I'm putting my own jokes and my own life story into this. And then I suddenly see it in a script. It's like, wait, that's my life story. I definitely look at it similar to how you look at it. Because, yeah. for example, I have, like, a notepad of funny Rick jokes that yeah. he's just kind of said in life, right? That I want to work into a script. But I personally 
I don't even like using other people's jokes not in a script. Like if I say something that I feel like was someone else's joke, I immediately will be like, oh, that wasn't my joke though. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I just feel bad about it. And so I have these like four or five Rick one-liners written down that I want to put in a script. And... 100% in my mind, I want to give Rick, like, co-writing credit just for these fucking five lines. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. Or however that process is, I need to have it known that he was a part of the process or else I just wouldn't feel right. Yeah, because you know it's their genius. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about the guy, right? Yeah. But I'm like, I wonder if that line doesn't exist anymore. It's like, no, I heard it on a podcast so I could say it. But it's mm. like, wait, if you got that joke from Dumb, then that's his writing credit. Mm -hmm. Just because you heard it on a podcast, or that's just how I feel. But like I said, Dunn doesn't feel a way about it. Right, right, right. right. But like when he said that openly, I was like, wait, is that a joke or is he for reals? I mean, it brings into the question the ethical dilemma of, uh, let's say, like AI, right? And that's the biggest, one of the big issues with like the writer's strike is like people worried about AI um, and people you know, AI being used to like replace writing jobs and shit, right? Because a lot of times AI is just, you know, it scans the internet, I mean, scans, I don't know, millions of scripts online and it creates its own shit coming from that, right? Or even like the AI app we're all using on Instagram like a few months ago, there were some artists that were pissed because they were like, okay, yeah, this is AI generated, but the inspiration is obviously from the art that I've created, like where, um, I don't know if you heard about this, but even like some of the AI created images kind of had like a morphed uh, recreation of these artists like little signatures mm -hmm. from their original artwork. So it's kind of like, where is the line drawn between inspiration and theft? Yeah, that's the thing that I was curious about, like yeah. just in that specific instance, because mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, is that inspiration or is that like taking, right? Right. And I just didn't know. I'm like, well, I guess because we put the information out there in podcast world or whatever. Whatnot, so yeah. is it free use now? Or is it yeah. like, hold on a second, you bit off my shit. It's tough, especially yeah. when like, yeah, I've probably said a couple jokes that I didn't even realize were in the back of my mind because I heard them somewhere else. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, but when you knowingly, I'm like, oh, this is, this is someone else's joke and I'm going to put it in this script and you use it without telling them. Mm, oh no! Yeah, I don't know. Like I, I felt a certain way about that. Like, cause I loved it. I thought the show was great. Yeah, same. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like if I watch it a second time, I'm like, hmm, <laughs> I wonder if that was yours, <laughs> or did you, or did you take that from somebody else? That's fair. You know, now it's like makes me question things. So I was like, oh god damn it, I hate this. I'm just gonna watch and enjoy. Am I allowed to write during the writer's strike, even though I'm not a part of the union? Am I allowed to write my script, or am I supposed to show solidarity and not work? I'll tell you this. Whether the strike was happening or not, you weren't going to write anything anyways. <laughs> so it, that question is irrelevant. All right. We have, I've heard this so many fucking times. <laughs> the whole audience is Chia now. <laughs> They're just like, yeah, all right, buddy. Not true. Somebody sent me a quote from Rob Deerdick today and was like, see, Tim, you can do it. Write that movie script, buddy. What did Rob Deerdick say? That billionaire. I forget. It was something about like, you know, um, you know, procrastination is something, something. Hey, do it. That thing you've been talking about doing. And I'm like, fuck. Yeah, he's right. I should. Mm, that's it. <laughs> it was it was better on Twitter. <laughs> but that's the long and short of it. Hey, when you want to do something, do it. Hey, look, sometimes you got to hear that shit, bro. Sometimes all it takes is someone to be like, hey, man, just do that shit. <laughs> and, you're that's like, and you're like, fuck, you're right. <laughs> you right. I should do that shit. <laughs> Even though your wife tells you that every day. <laughs> I know. And they hear it from somebody else. They're like, hey, man, look. You ever think that maybe you should just stop putting it off and just do it? And you're like, oh, my God. Nobody has ever put it to me like that where I could understand. Because here's the thing. Procrastination. Oh, Lord. Procrasting Asian. Wow. Pro. Pro. Cast an Asian in your movie film. Because there is a film growing on my brain from not being used, the creative process processed meat in my stomach. Wow. Gives me diarrhea. Wouldn't want to be ya. See ya. <gasps> Never shows her face when she sings. <laughs> I just want to swing from the chandelier. Oh, you chose a hard one there. <laughs> a Lear jet 
is what I fly on. Try on. New clothes from goodybrand.com. We got a new collaboration with Care Bears. Check it out. Goodybrand.com. We'll be right back. Dudes behind the foods listeners. This podcast is brought to you by Liquid I. V. Arnold always stays hydrated with a lot of liquid IV. Whenever I'm pumping iron, I need to go to health and pump myself with a liquid IV. That's me taking a poop. <laughs> Whoa, Arnold. That's a little personal. Thanks. High five. Get out of here. Great. I love it. <laughs> so if you guys listen, it's not always about being an Olympic athlete for why you need proper hydration. Sometimes it's just about the everyday life. We're talking about airport travel days, sometimes just sitting in the sidelines of your kid's soccer game, or just if you're out with friends, or maybe you just had a nice little debacle of a crazy night, and the next day you need to stay hydrated. That's where Liquid IV comes in. They come in so many different flavors, and they're all delicious. We're talking about lemon lime, piña colada, tropical punch, watermelon, my friends. Quite delicious. One stick of a liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. We're talking about B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C. You later, my friends. So real people, real flavor, real hydrating. Grab your liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code DUDES at checkout. That's 20% off anything when you shop better hydration. Today, using promo code DUDES at Liquid IV. Guys, don't you hate when you've been stewing about a health problem you have? You almost resort to texting your group chat to get your friends' opinions like, Hey guys, what is this wart on my testicle? Is this cancerous? Is this herpes? Does anybody have something similar? Let me know. And then you go to Google and you look and you're like, damn it, I have cancer. All right? Well, if you're trying to find a cause for your symptoms then and then you stumble down a TikTok rabbit hole full of questionable advice from so-called experts, stop it. All right? You need to F with ZocDoc. When you find the right doctor, you can feel it. You feel heard and you're at ease. On ZocDoc, finding the doctor that's right for you is seamless. The quality care you need is just a few taps away in the ZocDoc app, okay? There's nothing worse than going to a doctor's appointment expecting to be the center of attention and then your doctor seems like they have better things to do and better places to be. Come on. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. So go to ZocDoc.com foods and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash foods. ZocDoc.com slash foods. We're back, and David So just now told me that this shit was falling down. It was hilarious to me, and I enjoyed it very much. You are an idiot. <sighs> also, Care Bear collab, fucking fire. Thanks, man. It looks amazing. The uh, the jackets, fire. Thanks, dude. Hilarious and yeah. funny and great. Oh, you like the a caring bear? Yes, that was my idea. I like it. Yeah, I like it a lot. We were <laughs> brainstorming because you know we're like, okay, cool, we got this collab with Care Bears. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? And I'm like how do y'all feel about this bathing ape flip? And I literally like just put it together with like just copy and pasted some shit on my computer. I was like, how about this? And then um, our design guy made it happen. I was like, ooh. It's actually really, really dope. Thanks, man. I like it very, very much. Yeah, this is our biggest collab ever to date. So we're excited about What's it. What's your next move with um, with Goody? Because clothing is hard, it's right? It's so fucking hard. It is, it is one of the things that I... Pro, it's never a regret. It's not what I'm saying, but I didn't realize what I was taking on yeah. when we started these clothing brands, right? Because yeah, it does decent, but it's a very competitive and hard. In, I say even more than entertainment. Yes, because everyone feels like, I mean, yeah, everyone feels like they can be an actor too, but also everyone feels like they can start a clothing brand. And look, if you have that uh, notion to do it, good luck. Because like I have... A pretty substantial audience, right? Like you think, and like you have a, like a really big fan base as well. And you think, I'm going to put out clothes and everyone's going to buy that shit. Yep. And it is not the case. It's <laughs> not the case at all. And, you know, and I see with other people too where sometimes they kind of work the the angle of merch instead, mm -hmm. right? And merch, I think, financially probably does better. Yeah, right. Because you're not mm -hmm. worried about quality. You're not actually putting in 
all the work to make it look great, but you're still charging the same price yeah, and yeah. people will still buy it. It's just like, I, I just, if I wouldn't wear it, I don't want to put it out. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm we, saying? Uh, I mean, I, and I think we're the same way in this where when I, when me and Rick were like, let's start a clothing brand, we were very adamant about it, like not being Timothy merch. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It's by what it is by itself. Yeah. Exactly. I, like every time someone is like, yo, what is that you're wearing? People that don't even know me, they're like, well, where's that from? We're like, yes. That shit feels good. Yes. Oh my God, that shit feels good. It's rewarding. You feel me? But the clothing brand shit is, um, you know, it's, it's not as much reward as you would expect. Uh, and so when you ask that question, to be honest, man, it's like, yeah, like you said, it does okay, right? Um, we're not fucking killing the game. Uh, we're not going broke either. But, you know, I would be lying if I if I said that, you know, we didn't have the occasional conversation of like, okay, do we want to continue this? Oh, 100%. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, it's a lot of work. And sometimes you got to really weigh your options. Like, is this worth it? You know? Yeah. How about you? Like for us too, like we've had that conversation. I think for like my the brand that I have is very niche, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's contemporary fashion basics. So our stuff is kind of more geared to like what I normally would wear. Mm -hmm. But it's it's stuff that we want people to wear constantly. And it's you know like the, our model is like basically basics never die. Like you could you wear basics for the rest of your life. It'll never go out of fashion. Yeah, yeah. The idea behind that though is like it's just hard to compete. You mm -hmm. know, because other people will put shittier things out than you and it'll sell better. But, mm -hmm. And they still pay the same price. But yeah. it's like, how do we change this brand perception? How do we get this out there? How do we have every piece in everybody's closet? It's hard. And mm -hmm. like, if you think like trends change fast in any other facet outside of fashion, fashion trends, that it goes like this. Mm -hmm. Super fucking fast. People are looking for something new, something fresh every fucking time. Mm -hmm. And even then it's a challenge every season. Like you have to switch it up every fucking season. Here's what fucks me up. Is we got to be ahead. Yes. You got to be ahead to keep on track with the seasons. Like, we forget that shit. Like, it'll be spring, and we'll be like, oh, here's an idea for a spring shirt. And then you don't, you forget that this shit probably won't come out to like two months after spring. And it's like, fuck, how do, like, I'm not organized enough for this. Yeah, know? I didn't realize that either. Like, when you have to do, let's say you're doing a winter line, right? Well, mm -hmm. guess what? You have to submit everything once summer starts. Yeah. So it's like, dog, that's so much fucking prep because especially if you're doing international orders, um, which a lot of us have to do depending on what piece that you do, unless mm -hmm. you're doing like a domestic line, it's going to come in after, by the way, that's samples coming in and then you send it back out. Samples come back in, send it back out. So they get it right. And then it's four months later, you finally have your stuff. It's so silly. It's hard, man. Uh, I look, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't be able to do it without uh, Rick and Benji, who is like, they are like the heart of the shit. Um, you know, I'm more of like marketed front man ideas on occasion. But like they run all like the behind the scenes shit, all the production um, and they be stressing out, bro. I'll tune into the group chat every once in a while. Like, I don't know what the fuck they be talking about. I'm like, oh, God. All right. Well, let me know when we're brainstorming ideas for a T-shirt. <laughs> this is way too technical. You're like, oh, okay, guys. I don't know. You guys handle that. <laughs> I'm going to go sleep. <laughs> Otherwise, man, I probably wouldn't have a clothing brand if it wasn't somebody being like, hey, I'm going to do everything. You know what I'm saying? It's just a lot. And, you know, we're also, I think, like, the hard part, too, is sometimes people forget that, you know, we're competing against big name brands, mm -hmm. right? Like big name fucking brands. They go, well, their stuff is this. Part. It's like, you know why? Because they're ordering literally thousands of pounds of fabric at a time because yeah. they have that fucking budget. We don't have that. I know. You know what I'm saying? But, but we're trying to do stuff better than men on a smaller scale. So it's like, you know, it's, it's a competitive game. So a lot of people ask like, oh, what's your advice for getting into clothing? It's like, unless you're going to dedicate your whole life to this shit, don't fucking do it. Do people complain about your shipping prices? Not so much, mm. but yes. <laughs> Dog. It's, it's like, we don't, once again, we don't work on their scale. Like they do such huge shipments, they work out a deal. Yeah, so they can be, they can send the shit for free, quote unquote, which is not really free. It's just them charging you more so they don't have to pay for the shipping on the back end. Like shipping is expensive, y'all. Like we don't, it's not like when we charge you for shipping, we're like, we're pocketing that money. None of it. Sometimes we lose. <laughs> a lot of times we lose. It's expensive, man. Just bear with us, please. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you guys want to start a clothing brand, um, before anything else, just be ready to sacrifice a lot. Like, mm -hmm. sacrifice a lot. I say more than anything. Entertainment, whatever I've done, clothing is the one that that kind of, like, ate me, ate up most of my time. Like, And it's crazy because here's the thing, right? 
I feel like you all, you always have the businesses that are so high risk. Like yeah. you got your clothing brand and then you also like do the food shit and food shit is so like so it's just so touchy. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you really got to like be like there are restaurants I know that are popping that are going to have to close the doors even now, like years after the fucking COVID is over. Right. Mm-hmm. Quote unquote. One of my favorite vegan restaurants in L.A. dog called Nick's on Beverly is like. They're going out of business. That's crazy. And it's a pop-in restaurant. Like, every time we go, we got to make reservations. It's always busy, but they aren't going to make it. And I'm, like, so bummed about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super discouraging whenever I'm like, maybe I'll open up a little food spot. And I'm like, damn, these fools are going out of business too? It's hard. Food is also very fucking difficult. Most people have this, like— this vision and idea of everything that's good about a business, even like stuff that we do on entertainment, right? They yeah. only think about all the good shit, but they don't think about everything that we had to get go through to get to the point mm-hmm. where we can relax a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because those first like whatever, seven, eight, ten years was fucking grinding. It was hard. Mm-hmm. So now that we live a little comfortably, you want this end result. So even with food, right, you just see the drink and stuff. Do you have any idea how hard it is to fucking even predict the amount of like supplies you need to create so you don't have extra waste so you're not wasting money? Always ordering materials all the time to make the drinks, staffing out things, working out their fucking salary, their stuff, their insurance, everything. This is all the shitty stuff about that that I personally don't have to deal with because the other <laughs> partners deal with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But there's a lot of work that goes into this stuff. It's not easy. Just wait till I write this movie. Jesus Christ. And then I'm going to be out in the streets sucking <laughs> dick by then. Just, just fucking toothless. <laughs> um, I don't even care if the movie gets fucking one out of 10 <laughs> on reviews. I just want it to come out so people can review it. I care. I care. Uh, I'm I'm in some I'm in a pretty a couple shitty movies uh, that you can, <laughs> that you can stream on a couple different websites. <laughs> you know, one person that I feel like he's never getting his due justice mm. is uh, Andrew Bachelor. Like his oh ta- King Batch, his talent is so high. Yeah, but he is in some of the worst movies I've ever seen in my <laughs> life, and it's like dog, it doesn't even match his caliber. Yeah, man. Look, I feel like I feel like a lot of that comes from us coming from the social media world, right? Not only do you want quick something like people offer you shit and you're like down because you want to build your resume so much, especially for someone like Batch. And I and I relate to him where you really want people to um, kind of like not forget, but like not see you as just a social media person. So if someone as soon as someone comes barking in your ear about I got this movie for you, you're like. Fuck yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. It's let's, a check. Let's get it. Let's fucking do it. I'm going to build my resume. IMDB list gets longer. Let's fucking do this shit, right? And the next thing you know, man, you're in fucking some random city for a couple weeks in a cheap hotel room shooting a very shitty movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can only just kind of do your best with it and pray no one watches it. <laughs> uh, one time, one guy tweeted me. He was like, hey, man, I just saw this movie. I was like, eh. Let's not talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> you blocked him, deleted him. <laughs> yeah, sent sent goons to his house to rough him yeah. up. Um, and so I get it, you know, Batch, like here's the thing, Batch is a good actor, right? And he's funny and like he's a hard worker um, and he does really well at, at everything he fucking puts his foot into. Um, but you're saying you've seen some not great movies from him. Every single one of his movies are terrible. <laughs> They're bad. He knows it too. I'm, I'm pretty sure he knows it, right? And it's not even his fault. It's not like he's writing it. Yeah. It's not like his acting is terrible in it. It's just the movies aren't good. You know what I mean? It's these quick one-off Netflix movies, which are fine. It's great for a check. And, you know, it builds up his resume. Yeah. I just want, I, I'm just kind of wanting to see him do something dope because I think he has main character energy. For sure. So for him, he could be a main character in a fucking film. Just somebody write him some dope shit. I know he's going for it too, man. Um, I look, I'll tell you, I've been, when I go to the premieres of, the whack movies that I've been in, the best compliment is uh, when I make eye contact with someone I know. <laughs> you were good. And they, come, and they come to me and they're like, hey, you were great. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I know what that means, dude. I fucking know what that means. Hey, you were fantastic. And then he's like, hey, man, you killed your part. Yeah. He's also doing stand-up now, too. And he's getting really good. Yeah. He's getting better. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've, I've, I, you know, I've known Batch for a long time. So I remember when he first started, like, going out and doing it. It wasn't great, but, like, uh, I think he's— No, his, I saw it. It was bad. He's, yeah. He was really bad at stand-up. I know. Yeah. But he's uh, one of those people who I feel like has been putting in the work. He's gotten better. Crowd work is better. 
um, stand up is better in general. A lot of people, they'll start off as shitty comedians and then they just stay there, <laughs> stay there or just quit. He's on a, he's, I think he's around a lot of great people too, who mm. are good mentors to him. So yeah, his yeah. stand up is getting better. Like, uh, I, I think he's going to do it. He's doing a tour to, uh, soon too. Mm. So he's, he's on that fucking tip, man. So like for him, like he can do a little bit of everything, but damn, his, when he first started doing stand up, ooh, I saw him show up at an open mic. That shit was so fucking bad. I've never seen, oh my God. But that's what I like about that. It shows that you just, everybody has to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it, was a, it was an open mic. It wasn't a come see King Batch do stand up, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like I said, you, people can say what they want. If you don't like a stand up, that's fine. But, you know, comedy is very subjective. And when are you going on tour, David? So, huh? I don't know. Like, I had a long huh? conversation with a bunch huh? of my. <laughs> Stand up buddies, right? And they're always on my ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they see me work. And they're like, dog, just fucking do it. But I told them, like, you have to understand, like, you got to really want to do stand up to do it. It's, yeah. It's fucking exhausting. Right. So if I'm just doing it just because I feel like I owe it to you guys as friends, mm. then what's the point of this? You know what I mean? Right. Like, because I could do stand up whenever. I could do an open mic and just show up and do five, 10 minutes just for fun. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be anything special. But if I'm taking my time to set up a tour, fucking work my craft, go to these clubs day in and day out at night, fucking doing all this stuff every night, mm -hmm. then I have to want this shit because it's going to take up my whole life. Touring is a very tiring thing. And I don't think I want it that bad. Well, we're going to take a break and then we're going to talk about the things that David does, does want bad. Bye. <laughs> My lovely, lovely dudes behind the foods listeners, this podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp, it's all about that mental health. Have you been focusing on your mental health this year? It's 2023 and it is all the hype. And it's, uh, it's people with Riz get their mental health rizzing up, my friends. That's how the kids use it. Listen to me. I'm all about that mental health. I love it so much much. Whenever I need somebody to talk to to get my little wigglies out, I hit up my better help counselor slash therapist and they help heal my soul. It's so easy to caught up in what everyone else needs from you, my friends, and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. And that always happens to me all the time because I never think about myself. I'm always thinking about others first and sometimes it wears me out. So sometimes I need that a little emotional relief when I talk to my therapist. Listen, my friends, if you're thinking of starting therapy, you better help to try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash foods today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash foods. And send a wish out to the air. And send a wish out to the air. Just do that When clouds are brewing in your heart If you can dream, just send a wish out in the dark And do that Care Bears countdown Five, four, three, two, one Let me tell you what I do want, though. What do you want? I want this business to be, uh, I want to get done with this business in Hawaii for at least a year to see where we're at financially, okay. right? And it's doing great. Uh -huh. So it's making me feel really good. People are enjoying it. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, the clothing line stuff, it's growing, it's getting better. So there's these things that are on my plate that are my obligations. And because I have a problem of like, I have to see something through. Mm -hmm. The like I've been doing stand-up since I was fucking 16. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, during the time I took advantage of it because of YouTube. So I was, we were traveling around doing these college shows and I set it up as stand-up comedy shows. Fucking mm -hmm. 500,000 people show up every fucking show. After a while, it stopped feeling good. Mm. You know Why? what I'm saying? I don't know. Like it just didn't, it didn't hit. Mm. And you know what? We were doing the, 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 at the, at the comedy store, we were doing that. Yeah. And I got to flex, you know, my improv and stand-up stuff mm -hmm. and we were killing it. That shit was fun. It didn't feel good. Really? It was felt good because I was doing it with you and it was oh, fun. Right, right, But right. watching like the crowd laughing, it was, it was like a given. It's like, yeah, oh, that's right. I did this for since I was 16. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it didn't hit that spark. It wasn't like it fulfilling did. for you. It wasn't fulfilling, but it was fucking fun. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So 
those type of things have to be fulfilling because I know how much time and effort it's going to take. I see. It's 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 the fun isn't make doesn't make it worth it. Exactly. Yeah, you need something more than just fun. Exactly. Because I'm having fun doing this. Yes. Yes. You know yes. what I'm saying? Without having to travel and shake hands. <laughs> Shake hands with Without you having know. to go up on stage, bomb multiple times. Right. You know what I mean? Rework material, fucking bomb. Go through that emotional fucking stress. It's yeah. like, damn. You know what I I I, I think about um, since this show is a lot about things that we talk about doing that we'll never do. Um, <laughs> you know, as somebody who, you know, I don't do stand up, but I do kind of like I have like little jokes and bits written down here 100%. and there. Um, and when. My agent used to hit me up. These different comedy clubs would ask me to come like, yo, how much would it take for Tim to just come fill a room and just like do some material, right? And I'm like, honestly, man, I respect stand-up so much. I don't want to just be one of these social media influencers who's like going to get people in the room just because of my following and do shitty stand-up just for the bag, you know? Yeah. I'm like, I, if I do that, if I did that, I'd want to really work at it and then you know, get some, some of the offer. You know yeah, what I'm get a, get a decent little set together. You know, um, but what I have thought about doing is like putting together a small little little show tour of like maybe a couple comedian homies, couple musician homies. I could host that motherfucker, right? Talk my shit, be funny, rap a little bit towards the end, put together a little ensemble tour, and I know that would kill. Yeah, and fill up little like clubs and shit like that right um because at this point who cares about the quality let's just get this money <laughs> <laughs> but no i just i think that I, would be fun i had a conversation with a kid we did a show together and then he was like a, a, a fan of mine not anymore because after this conversation he hated me <laughs> which is still his fault because he talked to me about like he was asking me for advice for stuff that i couldn't give him okay right he goes I want to be an actor. I'm like, you're not asking the right person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not an actor. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, but I seen you act and stuff. I want to know like, how can I get in? I was like, listen to me, <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> I was like, I am not, I told you I'm not an actor, right? Yeah. So you need to ask advice from people that are good at what they do, mm, right? Mm. If you ask me about how to be a good actor, I can't tell you because I'm not a good actor. Mm. I'm also not an actor. I'm somebody who can act. Mm. Those are two very different things. Yeah. And so he was just like, Oh, like you don't want to fucking tell because I'm what well, you think I'm gonna be competition. I'm like, oh god! I almost I wanted to sock this kid <laughs> in his fucking face. And for the rest of that show, like I went up on stage and he was sitting there and he was also doing the show too. I just roasted him for fucking twenty minutes, yeah. and he was so butthurt, <laughs> right? Because people were cracking the fuck up. Yeah. And I was like, let me just tell you something right now. So you want to be an actor? You want to be a stand-up? I was like, I didn't prep anything. And even though I'm not very good at stand-up in the stand-up world, I roasted you for 20 minutes. I did 20 minutes of crowd work on you, mm. and I did better than your plan set. Ooh. So for me as a mediocre stand-up person, to outdo you when you work your set shows you're not good. Wow. So just go work on it. I was like, your problem is, is you're trying to skip steps, right? This yeah. immediately unfollowed me that day. Oh, God. <laughs> but I was giving him legit wisdom, though. You're me. No, no, no. Tough love. Tough love. It's important for people that don't want to hear it. Yeah, and I gave him legit. And I watched one day. He's going to be hella successful. He's like, I had this one time in this club. This guy gave me some real shit. <laughs> but I wanted to give him some real shit. Right, right, right. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Or he's going to not even realize that you were the reason. He's going to be like, fucking David So said this to me. <laughs> and, and now look at me. And it's going to be like, yeah, look what he did for you, dog. <laughs> he fucking gave you that motivation that you needed. Because it's not like I didn't think he wasn't talented. Yeah. Right? I just thought that he was just trying to cheat his way into some shit yeah. and it wasn't worth it like that. It's like, you're asking the wrong person. Bro, Bruh, I got a homegirl that like is always like, put me on. I'm like, to what? <laughs> so put me on. I'm like, I'm still trying to get on. Yeah. Or like, She'll see a, I'll put up a clip of, I don't know, Sam Foods or Basics of Bougie. And she'll be like, put me on your show. I'm like, did you watch the show? <laughs> yeah. What do you, what do you even say? I'm going to put you on the Basics of Bougie? How? What are you talking about? Where like, do you fit in this? Or like, she'll see when Foodie calls and be like, bring me on with you and your boy. I'm like, what? <laughs> you want to come on with me and David while we talk about food? You don't even, what are you saying? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And it's like, it's so annoying, dude. I'll, I'll tell you this too, right? People like that are very dangerous because we've, I've, I've definitely had situations where there were people in the beginning that we brought into a circle that 
they now feel obligated to all the success that is there, even mm. though they didn't do shit for it. Mm. And then you, you give them stuff out of pity. Mm. But the thing is, is like shit that happens to you in good fortune that you didn't work for, mm. you're not appreciative of. Because mm. they feel it's a fucking given. Yeah. And they go, how come I don't have more? How come I don't have more? Because you didn't work for it. That's why you feel that way. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Like we've worked fucking hard for this shit. You know, and now that I'm a fucking Z-list celebrity, <laughs> right, I enjoy it very much. It's a lot of bitter people, man. People that are bitter because, like, they're not at the level you're at. Um, and they feel like, you know, somehow you you being successful robbed them of, yeah. of their success. Because, like, somehow your shine take away took away from theirs. And it's like, what? I, what I what makes you think what I'm doing stopped you from from doing this, bro? A hundred percent. And I'm always saying too, like if you're trying to ride somebody's coattail, go find a real celebrity, you loser. <laughs> like don't this coattail is nothing. You have nothing to gain from me. Go find somebody bigger to step on. Like right. that, I, that's not. I'm not that for you. I'm not gonna get you anything. I'm struggling, bro. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yo, like, yo, yo dude. Like when, when, exactly when when people are like, put me on, I'm like, you guys. I'm struggling to have people listen to my new rap video. <laughs> my new my new rap video I just put out. Yeah. Like, my song that I wrote for my baby girl only has 60,000 views. What the fuck? <laughs> Bro, there's, a, there's this dude that I did YouTube videos with years ago when I first started. And out of nowhere, this was, uh, I forgot, X amount of years ago, but it was a while back. And hits me up through Facebook messaging uh, to say happy birthday. But it wasn't even a happy birthday. It was him just letting out all his gripes about me. Mm. He goes, hey, I just want to say happy birthday. I'm proud of your success. But I just want to be honest with you that when you left to LA and you didn't take me with you, I was actually fucking mad at you. And I'm like, take me with you? What are you, my child? That's weird. You're grown ass fuck. What the fuck are you talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. He goes, I thought we were in this together. I'm like, you never expressed that you wanted to come to LA, you fucking idiot. That's weird. And I gave up everything. I sold all my <laughs> shit. I had no fucking money. Yeah. I was like broke out of my fucking mind. Take you where? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I fucking lost contact with my family. My parents didn't want to talk to me. Like, dog, it was a lot. Mm -hmm. And so he writes this whole thing. He goes, I just want to say that we were both doing stand up at the same time. And even though you get views and people know who you are, I, I don't think you're necessarily funnier than me. And when he wrote that shit, I just wrote something back to him really concise. And I said this on my podcast. I was like, if you were funnier than me, you would be at where I am, not where you're at now. Ooh, which is where? <laughs> Nowhere. He's, he's a fucking waiter. God dang. Not that being a waiter is something else, but he, if he wanted to be a stand-up, he wasn't doing stand-up. Shots fired. And he goes, well, I'm writing movies. I was like, dog, I've heard this sentence a million times <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> You're writing movies. I have a friend named Tim. <laughs> no. But he was like, yeah, I'm in you know, meetings with executives, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and dog, guess what? Lo and behold, what's he doing? He's a fucking deadbeat. Ooh. Not doing anything anymore. And that comedian's name is Shang Wang. No. <laughs> that, guy's, that guy's fucking dope. <laughs> he's, he's fucking dope. I love that guy. Yeah. Um, just kidding. No, I actually, I legitimately love that guy. Uh, but yeah, that's super annoying. Um, he messaged that to me on my birthday, dude. Oh, like what? <laughs> I don't understand. First of all, damn, he knew your birthday. This guy loves you. Yeah. You know what the fucked up shit is? What? I'm saying good things about him. And then <laughs> he does that. I was like, wait, hold on. This whole like five, six years, yeah. I'm telling people how funny he is, even though he's not. Like I'm saying like good things about this dude. And this whole time he was trashing me. Damn. I'm like, that, that kind of hurt my feelings a bit because I'm wishing the best for him. I'm wondering how he's doing. He's not hitting me up. So I'm like, oh, I bet you he's still killing. He's grinding it, whatever, whatnot. Yeah. People are asking me about it. I'm like, dog, he's probably killing it, doing really well. Like if he ever comes to LA, I'll put him up or whatever, whatnot. Instead, the whole time he was saying terrible things about me. Wow. Yeah, that should kind of hurt my feelings a bit. Yeah. Maybe he's in love with Mariel. Uh, Mariel wasn't around at that time. But like from your Instagram posts. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's was my woman. Maybe he's obsessed with her, dog. Well, I don't know, but I I legit was pretty upset. I was like, dude, you could wish the best for some people, but that doesn't mean they're doing the same for you. Yeah, it's 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 fucked up that you would never even know. I would have never known on my birthday too. Of all <laughs> days, dog. Hey, happy birthday! But just to let you know, you're a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> Just to let you know, you're the reason why I'm depressed. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'll say this, man. Like, he was so bad at stand-up. And uh, we did stand-up together at the time. And at the time, we were, we were already performing for like three, four years. It was like that? Y'all yeah. were like a pair? Yeah, we were doing stand-up. Like, what in the, the same fuck? circuit. And so 
he was so bad at stand-up. I still remember one of his sets. And this is him doing it like two years into it. And he goes, opens up with this joke. And you already know it's going to be bad. So my dick is really small. Done. Nah. We're done. Yeah. Already done. Yeah. Right? Hacky, played out shit. And everybody was, you could see people's like eyes roll. But right? it's kind of funny too. Oh my God. <laughs> You could make it funny, I guess. <laughs> and then people were just rolling their eyes. Yeah. If, it, if to the point where white people are rolling their eyes at that joke, yeah. you know it's not a good joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And I'm like, you're saying you're better than me? <laughs> like, that's also offensive. Right. Highly offensive. You know what I'm saying? And like, <sighs> none of us were really good. We were, we were very mediocre stand-ups that were just trying to get good at this shit. So can the I, fact, yeah. Can I, oh, no, finish your sentence. No, that's all. Can I have him on No Chaser? If you do, <laughs> we are no longer friends. <laughs> We are no longer <laughs> friends. He was actually one of those dudes that was just always mediocre at everything, but he thought he was the shit. Mm. He was he was like a b-boy. He was terrible at dancing. Ah, oh, man. But he would always like tell people like he's like a dope-ass b-boy and everything else. But he was also a really funny guy to be around. But I liked him, though. Let me ask you this, David, So, As someone who sings, when you have friends that can't sing, oh my God. do you tell them? It depends on the scenario. Okay. Great that you asked that. Mm -hmm. One of my closest friends is legitimately tone deaf. Mm. And road trips, <laughs> we're chilling or whatever, whatnot. Like a song comes on, everybody wants to sing it together. Mm -hmm. He's so tone deaf. It's like a record scratch moment where nobody else can sing. <laughs> I don't ever tell him because I see how much he's enjoying himself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. He's not putting posting stuff, videos. He's not showing people that he could sing. Yeah. <laughs> if he was doing that, I'd be like, bro, stop it. <laughs> There's not enough bandwidth on the internet that can handle that shit. Uh, there was a girl I met one time, random, I forget it was, if it was at an event or what. Followed each other on Instagram. And then she started posting these singing videos. Oh, so Jesus. bad. Really bad. Like tone deaf for sure. And she was being serious. She wasn't trying to be funny. So of course, I'd send them all to Rick. So we could, <laughs> <laughs> so we could laugh, right? So... <laughs> Rick, when he found one that I hadn't seen yet, he'd send it to me or whenever she posted a new one and we would laugh. And then one day, I forget exactly what happened. I think I think I sent it to Rick and instead of replying to my message, Rick like accidentally commented on it. Like left a comment on her shit. What did he say? Oh, I forget exactly. You know, the details of this might be fucked around, but um, or maybe I'm the one that commented. I forget. But like, or, oh, no, no, I think he sent it to her, some shit. But she was like, LOL, well, what's this about? And he was just like, oh, no, you, you're killing it. <laughs> oh, my it was, God. I forget. You know, and look, if you ask Rick, I might be fucking up the details on this. Maybe he's the, maybe I'm the one that replied on accident. But it was something where we like accidentally said, and it was like, y nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's people out there that I just let them shine and enjoy what they do. Because if it brings them joy. I don't want to take that away. Right. I take it away when they expect me to feel a certain way about their stuff. Yeah. Like they keep showing it to me, right? Mm -hmm. And like, do you see? Like, do I fucking kill this shit? It's like, now you're exhausting me. Like, what if, just do it and enjoy it. Have fun with it. What if they posted, what if they created a whole music page and they were just posting bad sing songs on it? You know what? They'll, they'll be my James Cage wife. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> that you, do you remember the uh, the little Vietnamese? I think he was, no, he was Filipino. <coughs> he would do happy birthday to you. Brimman Rock. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not Brimman Rock. Hitman Breaker of the Eye. That was his name. What is this? Hitman Breaker of the Eye. Okay. He, he was this Filipino dude that was super fucking skinny, right? Yeah. And he would do, but he would sing his heart out <laughs> and he blew the fuck up because of how hilarious it was. Okay. And I think he found out that people were watching it as a joke. Oh, he and didn't I know. Think, and he deleted the whole thing. Oh. Yeah. Because he thought that people enjoyed it, but I, nobody knew that he thought that he was good. Oh. Like um, they thought he was being funny on purpose? Yeah. Huh. He, Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Just like that. Yeah. And I would cry laughing. <laughs> the best. One time, <laughs> one time we were playing charades, and uh, and this guy, the homie's cousin, his card said traffic, like you're stuck in traffic, right? <laughs> so, and mind you, my my rap name used to be Traffic, right? So he's trying he's trying to portray like, oh, you're stuck in traffic. <laughs> so Rick, he's guessing where we're playing, and Rick is like, bad rapper. <laughs> <laughs> 
and we laughed. <sighs> Only friends can roast you like that. I know. You stupid idiot. I know, but. You be hurting people, huh? <laughs> we, you know, look, we all, in my circle of friends, I don't know about your circle of friends, um, but we always kind of talk about how like, man, if other people were in her, our circle, they would like cry. Oh, dude, a hundred percent. No, did you see that story of my buddy Jason Cheney, stand-up comic? Really yes. fucking funny. I post this vi this this MMA fighter, uh, this photo of a guy who just looks like him. Mm -hmm. it wasn't a diss. This is an MMA. He's ripped. Yeah. Right. I'm like, it's like Jason Cheney. This looks. It looks like you. And I posted it. He finds the most ugliest, fattest <laughs> demon statue <laughs> with the longest breasts ever. He goes, "That's funny. I found a photo of you." I was like, "Of you transitioning into a woman." And I'm like, "That's not even the equivalent, bro." Like, <laughs> <laughs> I legitimately thought that this person looks like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you fucking autistic fuck. <laughs> he goes, oh, I thought you were making fun of me. I was like, how? How am I making fun of you? How? Like, it's an MMA fighter. He looks good. Well, maybe he genuinely thought that's how you look, David. So you ever think of that? Maybe, huh? And this is why this podcast is the last episode <laughs> of Dudes Behind or Dudes Behind the Dudes. I think... If we went on tour as a dudes behind the foods, we would get some good people in there. Oh, for sure. It'd be super fucking funny. Just us talking shit, talking shit about people. Um, maybe even eating food. And we'll call it dudes behind the foods. Mm. That doesn't sound good. I hate it. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> um, I mean, it's very possible. People have been doing a lot of live shows recently. And I feel like, honestly, we can, do, we can do it better. No, honestly. Can I come? Yeah, of course, Robin. <laughs> yeah, you could come and then you can come. Oh, <laughs> oh you yeah. can come. Oh. And then you can come like a river. River. Rib her. Eat her ass. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to make an Adam and Eve joke with the rib. Ooh, Ooh. Bring it back. Bring it back. Rib her. Her rib. His rib. He made her from. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. Ribs. Chilies. It's chilly. <laughs> in here. Hot in here. Nelly with the band-aid under our eyes. Save yourself from the bags. The Gucci bags are fake. <laughs> China, COVID, <gasps> Corona, with some lime, limon, limon me. <laughs> when you're not strong. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, damn, dude. That's, that one was a good reach. You like, I like that. Sometimes you, you, gotta, you gotta throw those in there, you know? I, like I that. loved that so much. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta do it with the Cholo accent, though, dude. Yeah. Lean on me <laughs> when you're not strong. Um, Robin Couch, people would, you could have your own little meet and greet for yourself because I'm sure <laughs> they'd be. People have been begging for a Robin Couch face reveal. That's right. It's just going to be a cardboard cutout and you're going to stick your ass in it. <laughs> and that's yeah, yeah. it. Just the ass where the eyes should be. Oh. Like, googly eyes. Oh, googly, googly eyes, eyes on, on the butt cheek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. we're going to do it just like everything, everywhere, all at once. I'm See, down. I'm not going to give my ass out there for free. Oh, no. There's this a cover charge. Great. For sure. Great. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll cut you 1%. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God but, bless America. Yeah. God bless America. But realistically, uh, I ain't going nowhere anytime soon. Yeah. You got two kids. One of them screams and the other one can't sleep. The goddamn babies. I got to get back to them anyways. Thank you all for watching another episode of Dudes Behind the Foods. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, all that bullshit. Buy things from Secret Society. Buy things from Goody. Uh, we love you. Bye. Bye. Yo, it's the dudes behind the foods. Did, 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 did.